three, four, five, six. I did inspections yesterday. It's like flatworms everywhere. People who don't dive a lot freak out because they're not used to breathing under the water. You could pass out that you're gonna have the problem. And what's the problem? The problem is your lungs will continue to expand. It's gonna pop. You're gonna burst blood vessels. All right, kids, don't do this at home, all right? <laughs> Wow, look at these guys. That's the one, Drew. That's, that's the one, that's the one. Woo! We're gonna try to give it some internal antibiotics right now. It's good. The boy, we have to put him to sleep. Yeah, yeah, put him to sleep, yeah. Guys, we're really enjoying bringing this content to you. If you're enjoying these episodes, Please like and sub subscribe and show us your support. Thank you. So much stuff. This is cool. This I definitely love. I gotta take this one. I gotta keep this here. Oh, oh, look at this. This is amazing. This is the uh, tank before the tank. All up par. I'm excited. I'm excited about putting this 2,500 gallon together for sure. Yeah, so guys, I found these pictures of the tank before anything was in it. And man, it got me excited about the 2500. So one of the other things we try to do on a Sunday is, you know, just make sure we clean up, tidy up. No major projects. We can't have a major project every day, you know? A uh, flatworm on it. Spinach? No, there isn't any flatworms on it. You gotta put on... No, I don't see any eggs. You gotta put on the light probably seen better. You, there's no, there's no flatworms on it. No. If anything, it'll be like on the base. One of the things I do in the lab is that I inspect all the corals very closely, especially the torches and hammers and the frog spawns. Usually when they look a little like distressed, like right now, you can see. Oh yeah, so they kind of retract, yeah? Yeah, like there's no flesh like on the outside. Usually it's like nice like purple pink. I, I see what like, you're talking fluffiness. about. Normally it's all the way down yeah. there. You see where coral ends? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um... Usually, like during an inspection, you want to like look for eggs like right on here, oh, right at the base, not at the base like that. Oh, I, I where right the in, flesh has been. Oh, right, right, right in the neck area. Yeah. Okay. So uh, usually, like they lay, lay eggs right there, so that once they hatch, they immediately have something to eat. We feel like eating flatworms are the worst. They are so aggressive. As soon as they hatch, they'll just eat that thing right up. That right there will be a flatworm. <laughs> I could dip it. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They're already peeling off from the melfix. The polyps aren't like super retracting, so it's not like a super high dosage. I want to see what this light also is like. Some eggs, if possible. If not, I will have to clean out all the racks. Some of the things that we do to deal with that is that we sterilize the vats. We do daily inspections. The best solution for bacterial infections will be a mixture of antibiotics, including Cipro. Pick up your side. Do we have any uh, scullies available? Yeah. Yeah, if we have a scullies available, I want to take this one out that has bubble algae. I think what's happening is the angel is uh, picking at it and bubble algae is taking advantage of the uh, dead spots and eating away at the coral some more. So let's take that out so we can brush it up, clean it up and put it in the hospital tank. All right. And I think this, um, this uh, close loop over here is bugging the scullies because it's adding so much that we got to put something there. So I'll figure that out. So right now I'm just going to give you scullies that we want to fix and stuff that we're going to take out of there. Let's bleach that. Okay. In the 200 gallon tank, we have some amazing fish. We have some of the rarest fish, which is the Abai and the Narcosis Angel. I think Andrew has the three out of six in the whole world, Abais, and two, one of the two rarest fish, Narcosis. But the thing is, they are nippers. So that's why you're seeing some of the bubble algae over the scal scalemia because the bubble algae will usually grow right over the dead 
piece of uh, coral and we know it's those angels that did that. So anyway, I'm gonna do a little cleanup in the 200 today. I feel like I'm a doctor and I got surgeons. I got like doctor's assistants here. Let me get the spatula. Dr. Don. Don. <laughs> Let me get some, you um... oh, got it right here. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good, guys. That's gorgeous. Oh my God. That's pretty amazing. You should you can put another color up here, you know, in a blank spot. Give me a I did, I did. No, where are you? On the other one? Oh, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to work on that now. So this is the next day, guys. I can't believe I have to tell these guys how many flatworms I found. Uh, so vat number three, yep. I, I found brown jelly in like one of the torches, so. In the noodles, noodle vat. In, in the noodle garden, yes. Yeah. So right now. All the holy grails didn't <clears throat> die. None of the holy grails are touched. Yeah, yeah. so um, I did inspections yesterday. There's like flatworms everywhere. So I'm gonna have to do water change, you already set. I've already separated the whole back. Flatworms are what kind of flatworms are they? Uh, like you feel like you're eating? Or? Yes. You yeah. not 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 the um, planarias. The yeah, actual you, yeah. the the big like ugly gray ones. Yes. Oh okay. My God. Yeah. So I've already separated it yesterday the whole back. Yeah. Uh, dose half, and then uh, today I'm gonna do the water change. I'm gonna clean out the whole thing. Not not like a full sanitation, but yeah. like. Just give it a good scrub down. What about the, what about the, those flatworms? What, what what they have to be? Do you feel you need to be dipped, right? Yeah. Yeah, we we dip them all. I mean, he's gonna dip sanitize it. The only thing he's not gonna do is scrub it down. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. What's what tip do you use for that stuff? I'll be using the melt fix. Yeah. That work for that? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Really well. Okay. Really well. They just fly off. Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't even have to like uh, shake them violently. I just, just use a uh, turkey baster and just blow them off. Yeah. So guys, got the news, we have a whole bunch of flatworms. That's why we quarantine. We're not using these euphilia for quite a while. We'll take care of this. Scuba, scuba net? Yeah. Well, where, where is it at? It's in the college place. See how I do it. College Point? No, college, Carly Place. Oh, Carly Place? Long Island, Carly Place, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So you should be there when we leave. We're gonna leave right now. I'm just gonna send this email out. Go, go, go right now. I'll have my uh, wetsuit. She said bring bathing suit and um, uh, the mask and I guess the, the actual controller stuff. All right, well, I'll see you guys there soon. Two o'clock. Thanks, Dan. So, guys, we get to Scuba Network and oh my God, this place is amazing. Everything Scuba Dive is there. I mean, this is a, its own hobby in itself, you know? We'll be back to do the class, so when you're ready, that's what we'll do. And I'll be regular clothes for the class? Regular clothes for class. All right, let me go try this on. Yep. Oh, we didn't, did we not bring it? We didn't bring it. So guys, I'm there, I'm checking through the car, and what do I find out? The device is not there. Fortunately, Dunn came to the rescue, and he brought me the box. You're just gonna initial down the side, sign and date it for me? And just your initials on each of those little lines sure. going down. Are you a diver? No, I'm a scuba diver. Are I've never dived. Diver? Do you have your certification card with no, you? No, I never got it. I would love to get my diving certification. You guys hook it up? I've never dived. I like, I want to dive. You ask. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Okay, so yeah, we're going to have to do uh, the basic scuba diver course for you at some point, too. Okay, I'll come um, back again. Okay. Today we're going to first start off by going through the components of the mask, talk about how it connects to the tank, uh, talk about the, the individual parts, what goes on, how they work, and then we'll talk about the skills you're going to do in the pool. People who don't dive a lot freak out under the water when they're there, you know, very short periods of time because they're not used to breathing under the water. If you breathe too rapidly, you will also build up carbon dioxide. So if you start to get like panicky in a full face mask, you keep recycling carbon dioxide into that mask. You could pass out from, from, um, from having too much of it. 
The other thing to remember is you never hold your breath. Yeah. So even if you feel like you're out of breath, yeah. you're going to exhale all the way up because you don't want the air that's been in your lungs to expand as you go up because air will expand as yeah. you go up. Pressure changes. And you exhale as you go, everything is fine. Yeah. It's if you either go too fast or you don't exhale that you're going to have the problem. And what's the problem? The problem is your lungs will continue to expand. Think about fill your lung up right now and now double it in size. It's going to pop. You're going to burst blood vessels. You're going, the capillaries will actually... Uh, That's oh. never going to happen. The, the tank's not even 15 feet, so I'm good. Right. <laughs> Guys, uh, I'm having second thoughts about this. My lungs expanding? Okay. I think that's pretty good. All right. So again, what you want to do is you want to feel for where things are. Where's your ambient breathing valve? Where's your push to talk feature? Okay. All right. So that you can turn it because when you start entering the water, you got to close that or to plug. Right. Yeah, that feels weird. That's Taking off the oxygen. Yep. The other thing you were reaching for right here. Yeah. Okay. This is a venturi valve. It will tell. It will change how much air is coming in and out of the mask. Okay. So if you feel like you need more air. You're going to open it up more underwater. Okay. Good. And Thanks. now let's take it off. You're going to start with two hands down low and you can pull those knobs. Sure. And then loosen up while you start. Ooh, that's intense. Guys, I think I'm ready. Let's go to the pool. All the way, lock it on. Next thing is going to be the regulator. All right, let me lock it. Yep, yep. I'm going to come back with diving. All right. I've always wanted to dive. I just never got around to like doing it. Inflate is this button, deflate is that button. Got it. All right, deflate. That's awesome. So you are good to go. Next thing we're going to do is lay this down while you go get ready. Because okay. you don't want anything, grab that, grab that. Thank you. You don't want anything to fall, get crushed, yeah. hurt, broken. Okay. All here, you're going to go get your suit on. Good? Yeah. All right, buckle yourself up. Feel these, hold on. See yeah. those? Yeah. You're going to pull them down. as Scooch and pull. Yeah, yeah. Get as much as much as you can. There you go. Okay. Good. Cool. That was fantastic. Okay. So yeah, so you were able to get the mask off, you were able to clear it, and you, when you got it back on, you took yeah. that one big breath in. Yeah. And then you and you cleared before you played with the strap, which yeah. is what you're supposed to do. You want to get that clear. I was just trying to stay calm. That was the main thing. And you did a great job. So guys, it was an amazing experience. Dan was amazing from Scuba Network. He showed me how to take out the mask from inside 17 feet in the pool and to get another uh, regulator in there. It, it, it was an amazing experience. Dan, Scuba Network, thank you guys so much. This pond is pretty new, yet we have massive new improvements for it. We got two massive biological rotary drum filters for each pond that connect to the underwater drains. In addition, we are installing a pool heater with a device like heat transfer, like we do in this tank, which will keep the tank, keep the pond at 55, 60 degrees all year round. And we're taking a look at the pond right now to see how it's doing because we think it's time to get some more koi. The rotary drums would be spinning. I don't know why they're not. Uh, we could talk through all that stuff with uh, Zach. Tip saying? Yeah. These things, I... let me give him a call. All right. You want, you want to know when we went in there? Hey, Zach. Yeah, hi. Hey, what's going on? So Andrew and I are out here. Do you know, does, does the rotary just, is it on a time lapse? Why doesn't that spin? Oh, it cleans on demand when, when it senses that. It cleans on demand when the field is cleaned by itself. Yeah, all right, so it's on auto. We're going to come by and grab a couple of, uh, grab a couple of koi and check out your system. But Andrew and I love the koi, man. Did you see the new koi? There is one that has a unique color in the top pond. The one with the orange fins and like the gray top. All right, brother. Thank you for everything. Ciao. Went to this amazing koi farm and saw some beautiful koi and spoke to 
our friend, the koi taker, who will be our koi doctor going forward. Let's do it. Nice to be here. Welcome. Welcome. Yo. Zach, what's up? Man? Hi, Roger. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome. We're welcome. very excited. Wow, look at these guys. So, so you see, you see, there's They're just massive. a, is this a concrete liner. or a liner? Liner, liner. It's a liner. This is what we will have. We talk about that later. Yep. Yeah. That, that so this is there. a lot easier to clean, point, point blank, right? It keeps um, it clean. I never clean, I don't clean. Many people ask me about the back of shower. The back of shower, maybe you don't know what the back of shower is, but uh, it, 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 it's part of the filter, but it's um, the filter gas. It's like a, it, it, it's like a gas exchange. Um, it take all the bad gas in the water, set as like a nitrate, ammonia, and then they, they, um, they exchange with the oxygen. So the back of shower really help to improve the water quality. So what do you think we should do today? Um, like uh, I talked on the phone with him and um, we, took, we took down the couple, that's my best one I'm talking about. This one? Uh, yeah, don't know, so that one. The all orange. Yeah, that one is a very good combination with the, the yellow feet and the white feet you have. Yeah. Yep. These two right here. The orange one? The orange one is a, you can see um, That's the one, Drew. You like a beetle and that's, that's the, the beetle. one. That's the one. The one. Woo! I'll tell you Look what. Look at that guy! He's so amazing. Looks like a big goldfish. Look how fast um, he no, did that. But, but, like I said, the body. Body's good. <coughs> we need one of those, Drew. Yeah. One of these nuts to put um, in. This one is um, a same, same body type of so your white one at home. Oh, the white one, yeah, right. The yellow amazing. one. Amazing. Yeah. The yellow one you have, it's very high quality too. It's yeah. very, it's, um, it's, oh, it's freezing. It's fine, it's fine. It's like a, it's a goldfish. Yeah. Um, and um, the feet like a, of the coal. coal, coal. The coal <laughs> oh my God, this guy's amazing. I've never been into koi, but like I feel like I am now. What are you looking for when it comes to koi? Like, um, what, 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 how do I know this is a healthy koi? Yep. And then let's talk about the design of it. Yep, yep. Um, like the eyes, the scales, when, when, the body. When we come to the fish, high quality, we know the, the breeder in Japan know. So then the name the price is different. Sometimes you see the, the, um, the fish is um, the beautiful and cheaper, but sometimes you fish that you don't like, but very expensive. Most of the fish is potential. Um, the, 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 the body is the, the most important. Normally, when the new hobby, um, they, they go with the pattern. We um, uh, normally at the new hobby that they all go select with the pattern of the koi, and then, but when you long enough into the hobby, you select the koi with the body first, and then the skin quality, and then the pattern. The pattern. Uh, yeah, the pattern. The new catch, people. Uh, the so let's, let's just put the pattern and the look of the fish Second. away. How do we know that it's healthy? Um, I've been on, this is you, the good you, body. You, you can tell that the skin is shinier. Yeah, shiny yeah Because skin, okay. they, they always have the uh, slim, uh, slim coat, but, uh, but if they're healthy, it, it looks shinier. The male and female, you can rub here. Uh oh. You can rub the fin. The fins, okay. Yeah, if you feel some sand, that's a male. If you feel some, some smooth, it's a female. And also, you, you rub it here. So, sand is male? Sand is male, yeah. So, this is female right yeah, here? Yeah, it's very smooth. This is female? Yeah, and, and rub here too. And but, male is rough? Yeah. Male really more, feels, Why they're trying to make the nest? Male, you feel the sand. The, the male, you feel a little sandy. Yeah, yeah. But, but you already know it just by looking at it. Yeah, but uh, but sometimes sometimes it's the feet too young. You if you feel same thing, all smooth. They don't sand. Oh, so it's hard. When it go older. So if that if that's the case, we have to flip the fish. Uh oh. And then you see the the the, the, the van right here. Yeah, it's female. The, the van they go inside. That's a male. That they are sticking out. It's a female. Yep. Oh, so it's the opposite. Uh, yep. yep. <laughs> okay. So guys, as the saying goes, you learn something every day, uh, specifically from a reefing hobby standpoint, but to get to learn more about koi fish, it was an amazing experience. You know, Zach was great. Drew, what's going on over here, man? So we got some action here. Um, these are your fish that have been doing just great grand in here. Nice. Um, we treated them with two doses of Prazi Quantal already. Okay. For deworming. And we're going to do a water change today, and starting next week, we'll probably start bringing the copper up. Is that and next just week or soon? Okay, probably next the weekend, week. the weekend. Okay. After do you the think water the, the amphibians are going to be okay with the copper? I'll bring it up real slowly. Yeah, it's slowly. copper power. Please don't kill my I fish. I won't kill your fish. I'll bring them up to about two, very, two very, all very slowly. Okay. Um, and we'll keep them in here for two weeks. And then we scoop them out, and they'll go into the homes they belong. So we arrived back from the koi farm, and we have to deal with some of the fish in quarantine. We have our strict protocols, and even though Rashid's fish are fine and look fantastic to me, 
we're going to put them through the meds anyway. Two Prozies, Copper, and Metro. So for some of you that are wondering uh, why my fish are in Andrew's place, I, I broke down my 300 gallon tank and it was an amazing tank. It was eight feet wide, three feet deep, and two feet high. Uh, really helpful to have it only two feet high so I can do maintenance in there. I had amazing LPS, SPS. You know, it was, uh, it was a pleasure to have this tank for a few years, but uh, I guess it's time to build another one. One of the amazing things we found is it was hard for me to even give away this tank for free. So what I ended up having to do is hire a couple of guys after we got all the livestock out and take this tank out and uh, just put a beating on it because I think a lot of people were intimidated by the size of it and getting it out of a New York City apartment. Oh my God, it stinks. It smells pretty bad. Fix these. We're gonna push this in the leg. Yeah. So someone could be here. So look, listen. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Okay. Uh -huh. See, I understand. I understand. We have to be pushing a little bit first. Yeah. We're gonna use this to do it. We're gonna use this to do it. Yeah. You guys ready? On three. Okay. Uno, dos, tres. Okay. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Left. One, two, three. Go. That's it. Oh, finito. Let's go here. I know, we have to fix the side and then we come back. Yeah, let's see, let's see how this does. If it does, okay, okay. Yeah. One, two, three, go. Yeah. Go. Yeah. go, 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 go. Necesita que le empuje de allá. Espera, 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 ahí lo tiene, lo tiene. Ahí va, que caiga ahí. You got it? Okay. Slow, slow. No, no, no. Slow. Okay. Okay, now we got a lift and push it over there. That's it. Uh -huh. I got it. I got it. You got it? It's okay. I got it. Go over there. Over there. Okay. Okay, slowly down. Ready? One, two, three. One second. One second. Get your feet. Get your feet yeah. Okay, you get it. All right, kids. Don't do this at home, all right? About this conspic, he's the one eye conspic that came from the main he, he display. He got beat up. Uh, they, they're breeding, and so this guy got picked on. His eye blew out. They're very sensitive in his eyes, and you could actually see some body shots. So he's in uh, 30 to 40 milligram per liter of Cipro. Okay. Uh, for two hours, and this is a very good bath. We're gonna try to give it some internal antibiotics right now, via injection. See if we can save it. That's good. That's it. The first time I've seen that. Something called enroll flax and goes uh, right into the bloodstream. With the koi, we have to put in sleep. Yeah, you yeah. put them in sleep, yeah. One of the things that we have saved fish with when fish are really bad are injections of an antibiotic called Batril. And the pond guy happened to have had injections and came over and injected one of our conspic angels that got beat up in the main display. So guys, Zach and Andy are here, so it's time to get those koi into the pond. So I have my fancy swim shorts on. Let's get in the pond and get these koi in there. There you go. That's amazing, look. That, they go right to their guys and start schooling. One more here, right? They know right? each other. <laughs> they know each other, right? Yeah. They remember each other? Yeah. That's amazing. The fish like look they really like together. They always swim around together. Look like they're hanging out. A certificate of origin for which one? The one with the head? The one, the one that's that one, right? Perfect down. Oh let's yeah. see Zach. Let me see this. And I'll get the big guy. And that's the big orange one? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, see? Our certificates. certificates, yeah. So it's like owning a Rolex watch. You get certificates. And we picked out these beautiful coys that have Lineage and certificates. I love it. <laughs> Guys, 
Guys, this was a very productive day. We were out early at the koi farm, brought the kois back in, had them over. They, they really enjoyed their time here and they helped us out themselves with an injection of a sick fish. And we really had a great day with them. Looking forward to tomorrow. Catch up to him. Didn't bring an apple you for the future? Never again. Oh, it's in the car. Uh, it's in the lunchbox. All right, while you're in there, no filming of the teacher. Okay, you can't film the teacher. We gotta wait. <laughs> All right, time to go. I don't know why you're keeping your. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 take it up. <laughs> pick it up, 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 pick it